Welcome to the City of Miramar's Business Connect, where we connect your business to what's important. I'm Johnny Douglas, your host, and today we will be discussing effective team building. We have as our guest with us Ms. Jane Cabrera, who is the founder and CEO of Jane Cabrera Coaching. Welcome, Jane. How are you today? Good morning. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here this morning. We're glad to have you here. You know, no matter how successful your business has become, there is always an opportunity to improve performance of your leadership and your teams. So um, with saying that, I would love for you, Ms. Jane, to go ahead and give us an overview of your business and about what can we expect or a corporation can expect when they hire you on? Well, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, so what I do in, in my work, I, I do coaching and training. And the things that I focus on, like you said, are leadership, communication, team building, things of that nature. And I, I think to like kick the conversation off about it, what, I'll, what I would start with is I, I saw an article in Bloomberg this week that talked about the great resignation and what's behind the great resignation. And, you know, obviously the big thing that comes to mind is, is, you know, pay and, you know, things like that. But this article focused on what they called toxic work culture. Oh, wow. Right. Mm -hmm. And when they really drill down and start talking to people, they found that people were very dissatisfied with their work environment, that, that the toxic work culture gets to a point where they, people feel like I can't take it anymore and they want to leave, mm -hmm. right? So bringing that back to your, your question, when I work with leaders and teams, what I found is just in our normal discourse, our normal day-to-day, -day, a lot of times we are engaging in the things that bring about toxic work culture, but we're not doing it intentionally, we're unaware. So the kind of work that I do is to help bring about awareness, like focus on the subtleties, things that you don't notice, things right. that you may be thinking or saying, or you know, it's maybe running in the background, but you don't realize it, that's affecting the way you're communicating, it's affecting your leadership. It's, and again, I think, I think in general, people are well-intentioned. We all have good intentions. We all want to succeed. Right. But sometimes there's some things operating that we're not even aware of. So the kind of work that I do with leaders and with teams is to engage in a conversation that helps. What I like to do is point in the direction, point to some of the subtleties that you're not already noticing. Oh, wow. Wow, that is, that is such a great, great um, point that you make because you're right. A lot of times we um, bring things to the, to the organization that we're unaware of. And those things, once you capture them, it's, it's kind of, I guess it's kind of like an AAA meeting. First, you got to admit that you have the problem. <laughs> and then once you do that, then you can begin, the help can begin. So that's an awesome thing. That's an awesome way how you come into organizations and you're able to identify those um, problems and then to work through them. Well, you know what? I'm going to travel a little bit backwards here because you're a very accomplished lady. You are very accomplished. I have to boast about you right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you, you have, insist, <laughs> you have you have um you have uh, you have many cert uh, certifications. You have the MWBE. You have the M you have the MBE Tier One um uh, cert certifications. You work with um through and it's by the My, uh, Miami Miami Dade, right? Correct, Miami Dade Public Schools. Yes, Miami Dade Public Schools. Now you started you started um off. Um, reaching out to parents and teachers and parents and students. Am I correct? Or parents, parents. Not, not children. I've always, I've always been an, an educator of adults. I, I, okay. In my practice, I, I've never worked with uh, students or young people, mm -hmm. but that's correct. I actually started out as a parent educator 
That's where I got my okay. original certification in a parent education course. Absolutely. Well, now your ties with also the Bahamas, correct? So yes, that I, I actually uh -huh. do have ties with the Bahamas, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so in I am a, I serve in leadership with Toastmasters. And our district, District 47, covers South Florida and the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. So with, with that connection, I, I do have ties with the Bahamas and I've done, uh, I've done workshops through Toastmasters, but I've also done some work with the uh, Bahamas Union of Teachers. Absolutely. So great. Yeah. So, one, so I just wanted all of our listening audiences to know that we, I have with me before me today, a qualified and capable coach that can come in and really, really dev into your team building up effectively. So that's what I wanted to bring up. Thank you so much for allowing me to boast on you a little bit. Thank you so much for bringing that forth. <laughs> <laughs> so now I want to ask a couple of questions so we can get this interview going because I have a lot to, of questions to ask you and a lot to cover in this interview. Yes. Um, we're, we're still in what we call a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the pandemic is universal for us. It has caused people to have all kinds of stress and anxiety in their lives, at home, on the job, even in their worst place of worships. There, there are a lot of places where people are stressed out. They're stressed out from job loss, from um, financial um, burdens, from loss of loved ones, all of these things are impacting how they perform and how they bring all of that to even their workplace. Um, my question for you is, what can you say to someone who is dealing with multiple stress at the same time? Do you have any guiding principles for that? Yes. So, so yes, I do. So first, you know, the first thing I want to say to that is I want to acknowledge the reality of what people are going through. And I, I am, as, as an individual, I am not like in this bubble where I'm apart from it. Mm -hmm. It has also impacted me as well, right? You know, so, so mm -hmm. it's, I want to acknowledge it's a situation where we're, we're really like, we're all in this together. I have also had, you know, challenges, we, you know, loss of loved ones, right. you know, unexpected things come up, financial consequences, the whole gamut of what people are going through. We're all going through that. Now, the question you asked me was like about guiding principles. And one of the things that I talk about a lot is mm -hmm. I call it the principle of thought. And the thing that causes the most stress mm -hmm. is not so much what's happening because what's happening is happening. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest things that drags us down, drags us our energy down, makes us stressed out is somewhere in those clever little minds of ours, we have a thought that sounds something to the effect of this shouldn't be happening, wow. right? Or why is this happening to me? Mm. Okay. Now, the key thing that I said, like the first thing I want to say is it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. And I want to, I acknowledge that it is happening. It's mm. real. And wow. the feelings are real. So I'm not in this denial. You'll never hear me talk about positive thinking. <laughs> you really won't because positive thinking is like fake it, like pretend what's oh, real God. isn't real. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't go with that at all. It is happening. There are consequences. Right. We're, we're in it. We're feeling it, you know, and I have loss. I have grief. You know, when something happens, I have frustration. I feel those feelings, and we all do. What I'm pointing to is the additional layer that we add on 
by going into this other realm of thinking like this shouldn't be happening mm -hmm. or sometimes and and everyone has their own flavor of where they go with it so sometimes it's like what did i do to deserve this you know am i doing something wrong you know is there like a punishment so mm -hmm. people people have yeah. thoughts that and when we start to go down that rabbit hole of thought it kind of spirals so we can get into like a downward spiral. Wow. So the guiding principle that I have when I talk about thought is just be aware of your thoughts. Just notice them mm -hmm. because not everything we think is true. Mm. And not everything we think is informative. Mm. Wow. You know, not everything is, is relevant, informative, should be guiding our actions. Mm -hmm. You know, do I go down the negative rabbit hole? Yes, I do. I teach this stuff and I go down the rabbit hole. The only thing that is, the only thing that is helpful is that when I'm in that, I know one thing I know is it's temporary. Mm. Wow. Okay. It's temporary. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm in the rabbit hole. I might be down here for a while, mm. but mm. I'm not going to live here. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I usually say is that um, this too shall pass. You know? Exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> this too shall pass. So having that knowledge that it's temporary, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. And when I'm in that state, not a good time to make decisions. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. So just wait it out. Right. Wow. Wait it out. So it's almost like silence is the, silence sometimes is the best thing to go with. It's not to do anything. Just wait it out. Um, go with your own with your daily living, but don't read more into it and what it is. And just let it happen because and i guess i guess what i want to say is that whatever you do will it change the situation like in most cases will it really change the situation or will it make it worse perfect question right <laughs> and that's a that's a that's a beautiful question mm -hmm. so that's, and that's what I would recommend. Like, okay, give yourself that pause. You can mm -hmm. press the pause button, yeah. wait. That's a beautiful question. Yeah. If your action is, you know, going to make it worse, don't do it. Right, right. And if there's an action you can take that can make it better or that can move it forward and improve it, mm -hmm. then that's common sense. Take that action. Right. Wow. Right. And, and so that's, we're in a very action oriented environment. You know, our culture is everything about, you know, do it, just do it, just do right. it. Right. Sometimes the best action is no action. Right. Slow down, right. slow down, wait, wait for guidance, wait for clarity. It's, 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 it's good. You said that because I think um, there are times I do, I have a ritual that I do every new year's. New Year's Day. New Year's Day, I go through my phone, I go through all of my contacts, and I go, and, and in my time, I sit there. If I hadn't communicated with you in the last six months, I, I really don't think that this is a relationship <clears throat> that is an ongoing relationship. It was a seasonal one, which means that that season of my life with you is open. not that you're a bad person, not that, but I don't need to contact with you anymore. And I kind of go through those things. And so I kind of do that even so with my, um, my goal setting. Um, how, how did I perform that task last year? <laughs> Was it beneficial to the team? Was it beneficial to me? Was it beneficial to the, um, the um, audience that I'm trying to reach? And I examine that and I look at that. And, I, and, the, and the scary thing, um, Jane, is to be honest. <laughs> that is for me that is a scary thing to be honest know that you really know that that really didn't work well so then how can I make it work well or it could be is it even something that could be useful 
Yeah. So, so it's kind of like what you're saying here is take a step back before you react and think about it and think about all phases of it, not just reaction. I think sometimes it becomes just reactionary. If it happens, you know, boom, I got to take action, you know, right. and sometimes you don't, sometimes you have to sit there and sit in it and just, and just, and just allow it to permeate in your, in your spirit and say, okay, now that I understand what it is mm -hmm. and understand my role in it, now maybe I can give myself a, a great answer. Would that be correct? A, a great way to go. Yes. And mm -hmm. I want to add one more element to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And that is, even when you do your assessment, and I agree 100% with taking assessment and that being honest with yourself, what worked, what didn't, Mm -hmm. You know, you can make an informed decision then on how to pivot, mm -hmm. but even your analysis mm -hmm. is in your humble opinion. Wow. Because I you right don't there. really know. Oh, wow. That's the, you know, this is the other, one of the principles, because especially in the personal growth world. And we've talked about the law of attraction and manifestation <laughs> and all of this thing. We've deluded ourselves into thinking we have a lot more control than we really do. Oh, wow. There's so much control. Now you hear my dog barking in the background. I know we <laughs> talked about your sitting. dog at one time. My in son, is, yeah. <laughs> my son FedEx is guy must that. be there. So <laughs> it is what it is, right? Yeah. But, but coming back to that, especially in the personal growth world, mm -hmm. we've deluded ourselves into thinking we have more control than we really do. Oh, wow. And a lot of times, even as business owners, we're like, okay, well, now I own the business. Like now I have more control. Mm. There's so much we don't control. Right. Oh, wow. And even those things you say, okay, the impact, your desired impact, the, the result you want it from something mm -hmm. Maybe it didn't turn out the way you anticipate it, mm -hmm. but you cannot really know the true impact. Mm. Wow. I, you know, when I say that, like when I started as a parent educator, for example, mm -hmm. you know, I had this idea of how to develop that into like a business. Mm -hmm. And it never really flourished in the way I had intended. It just didn't mm -hmm. really get off the ground the way I had intended. <laughs> and I bumped into parents sometimes two, three, four years later. And they would say, oh, you know something? There's that one thing you said. It yeah. still says, stays with me today. And I remember if I just do that one thing, I'm mm -hmm. okay. Wow. So sometimes we don't even know the impact we make, you know, but in our own view, we feel that maybe it wasn't enough, but it was just what it needed to be. Wow. Right. Right. No. Right. No. That's what I'm saying. Wow. So awesome. these are some of the principles right. that what I'm pointing to is thought, you know, paying attention to your thinking, mm -hmm. being aware. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that there's something else operating, call mm. it what you will, mm -hmm. but there is something else operating mm. and we're not in control of every little thing. Wow. That, that, that is, that is huge. That is a huge breakthrough for anyone to come to that realization that, Hey, you know what? There are some things that are out of my control and, um, I'm just going to have to go through this. And, and, um, and I know the key word and the active word that I used there was through. I'm just going to have to go through this, which means that I'm not going to stay in it. I'm just going to go through it for a period of time. Huh. In the meantime, what do I need to do for me <laughs> while going through it? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. That, that is, that is a great principle. I love it. I love it. I love it. Organizations. And we also know that organizations through this pandemic and, and even what we're going through now with Omicron, all organizations are going through a constant change. 
there are constant changes um, where they work from home. They're, they're doing um, hybrid. They've turned to a hybrid situation. You have um, people who have been um, let go because they're downsizing because there's no need for the um, employees anymore. You have um, companies that are opening and businesses are opening that people won't work. They can't find people to, to work for them. You have businesses now who are dealing with the fact of how do I handle employees who are out for a period of time because they have been affected? Uh, and by the, how, how do we handle that? Our attendance, how do we do that? How do we do, how do we handle those who have gone through loss, but the insurance, all the stuff we're looking at, how do we handle this? So how do, so how have you been able to support them through these times when there's so much constant change in their workplace? It, that's a great question. And one thing, and it's, it's kind of crazy, like the simple answer to that, believe it or not, is one way that I've been able to support them is with like what we're doing right now, we're meeting on Zoom. And the ability to meet and conduct business, conduct training in a remote environment that's actually something that a skill that I honed because of necessity. Okay. And because I've honed that skill, that is one way that I can support that we're in this hybrid environment or we're in this online environment, but yet we can still conduct powerful training and coaching sessions in this environment. And, you know, I know you right. participated in one where we did like a team team style workshop where we were able to do it effectively through the use of breakout rooms right. so people can have individual conversation and together and have it still be powerful and productive. Right. So, you know, that's one way. Mm -hmm. Another another way that I would say, you know, the support of the support of people is kind of the, the same tone of the conversation we're having now. As an individual, I don't have all the answers, right? Like I can't snap my fingers and say, okay, here's the staffing problem fixed. Right. But what I know about people, the leaders that are in the positions, they have the solutions within themselves. Right. Right. And as we talk about these principles, as we talk about thought, the, the things that bog us down, that, that get us like stuck, like oh, there's no way out of this. I don't see a way out of this. Mm -hmm. When we slow down and have this kind of conversation where we point to the truth of human beings, human resiliency, mm -hmm. how the human mind really works. When you slow down and look in that direction, there is something new, mm -hmm. a new idea, the fresh idea. It does, it, it does arise. And the best ideas really do come from the people that are in that place right. because they know the nuances. They best mm -hmm. know the nuances, right? So find the best way to support people is, is the conversation. The, taking right. that time to slow down mm -hmm. and have the conversation. And it's completely okay to speak the reality of what mm -hmm. you're going through. It's completely okay to speak the frustration because that's real. Right. Right. So we don't have to pretend that it's, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you know, mm -hmm. let's look at this in a positive light. No, right. it's actually, I'm, a, I'm okay. Like, let's start with where we really are, which is not positive right. at all. It's a mess. Right. right. <laughs> I don't like what's going on. <laughs> it, yeah, it's a complete mess. Let's right. start there. Let's start there. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. And, and let's, let's, let's hear it. Give it, and uh, you know, my, my program mm -hmm. I talk about is making space, but truthfully give that space. Wow. It's, it's okay to give space to the mess. It's a mess. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's speak it. Let's let it be there. Let's acknowledge it. Wow. 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 It's, yeah. It, so it's so so it's okay to it's okay for leadership 
to give employees or employees to give leadership the opportunity to admit that it's just, that this is messy and be okay with that, but work through that. Well, and when we speak of toxic work culture, mm -hmm. the pressure to try to pretend that it's not really that mm -hmm. is what makes it toxic. Yes, 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 yes. So, you, 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 yeah. You know, but in, in most cases, in most cases, when you're talking about, especially when um, organizations are going through change, it's 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 um it's almost taboo for employees to somewhat speak their mind because they the fear of well I, they may let me go they're already going through changes I don't know what those changes look like I don't know how I look like in the change so there's a lot of anxiety there there's a lot of um, there's a lot of, um, of, of feelings of feeling um, oh wow overwhelmed because there's a change in organizational structure. And if they're changing a structure, it's going to involve me. How do I look into that? How do I fit in that? And so, but but how do I? How do we get employees past that taboo of thinking that if I express my opinion, you may fire me? That's and that is comes down to leadership and how leadership handles their communication. Mm. And one of the things that I specialized in back before I was coaching, mm -hmm. when I was working in corporate, and I think you saw my, my background is actually in accounting. I was an accounting <laughs> professional for 20 years, but what I specialized in was change management. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that projects were successful is what, I, what I, I understood at the time, exactly what you're speaking about, that the and I, I do coach and train on change management. That's one of the key areas I work on. And you're bringing up one of the key things that I think leaders misunderstand. Leaders take resistance as a negative. Mm -hmm. And again, they have that thought there shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. Completely misunderstanding the real purpose of resistance. The real purpose of resistance is what you're saying. You actually have employees that care. Mm -hmm. They care not only about themselves and their place in it, but they care about the whole environment because they've put time and attention into that work. So when there's a change and they're resisting, a lot of times they have insight into something that they know it won't work or they know where the obstacles are going to be. And the resistance is that like, oh, you know, until you hear them, like we've done this before, a lot of times those people have mm. valuable information that you need to be tapping into. You're not going to get that information if they're not free to speak. Wow. And, you know, when back when I, I did a lot of, I was with Coca-Cola Enterprises quite some time ago. And back when I used to do, uh, do my, my, uh, like re-engineering or whatever that we called it back then, but I used to actually <laughs> go out into the field and talk about the change that was coming. Mm -hmm. I used to hold these meetings with key, you know, key people. Mm -hmm. And when I would go out there and share, this is what we're getting ready to do, they would get upset. And quite frankly, a lot of times they would yell at me. And that sounds like people are like, oh my gosh, but what I used to do was actually just sit there and listen. Mm. And so I didn't take the yelling personally because they weren't mad at me. You know, mm -hmm. they weren't, were, they weren't mad at me personally. They were just upset or they were passionate. Mm. And I would, I would actually just sit there and listen mm. and hear what they had to say. Mm. And I take it in. And, and as I took it in, I was like, I would realize like, oh, wait, they just gave me a really valuable piece of information. Right, right. Let, let's talk more about that. Let's explore that, you know, let's, or maybe let's hold off. Let's not do this yet. Let's circle back. You know, I, I hear, I hear the problem. Quite frankly, I don't know the solution. Right. right. Um, let's take a pause. Let's connect again next week. Right. What would happen is, again, just because they had the opportunity to speak it, by the time we connected again next week, uh, most times they would have the solution. 
Okay, wow. we thought about it. Here's what we're going to do. Boom, boom, boom. Wow. 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 Thanks. I'm that, really glad yeah. you brought that up. Thank you so much for bringing that up. That, that, is, that is so critical. That is so critical. I love it. I love it. I, um, as I dealt with my children when they were growing up, I would always parent to them with, a, with an agenda. I would always, I always had an agenda. When I, when I parent with them, if it was anything between dating, well, I want her to date, I want her to date the right person. Well, yeah, what's right for her is not maybe not right for me. Here's my list and you right, need here's to go my check list off the of boxes. What, what he should look like for you, right? <laughs> and so, and so that, I had to really take a step back with that. And I thought, okay, how can I go and have an adult conversation with my kids? and get them ready for the world in which they're being prepared for. If I'm going to come with my own agenda, it's, it's already not a one-sided conversation. It's, it's already a one-sided conversation. It's already that I'm coming with my views and whatever you say, it doesn't matter because this is my agenda. So I had to take away my agenda and actually go into the conversation and do just what you said, listen first. And I'll tell you, the first time I did that, it was such an eye-opening experience for me. I thought to myself, wow, we've done good. We raised my children. I've raised my children very well. They are very intelligent thinkers. Mm -hmm. And I know they're going to be successful. But I had to give my time, I had to give myself that space to allow myself to put my guard down, my agenda down to hear what they had to say and let me, and, and, it, and, and, it, and it fortified for me that they're gonna be okay, you know? And so I take it to what you were saying with this, with the same thing with businesses and employees when they're doing that, you gotta let your guard down and not come with your own agenda and just listen, which was perfect. That was so, that was so huge for me. Thank you for letting me know that I did the right thing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and I, I really want to acknowledge like how powerful that was for you to have that insight, right? Because, because I, you know, what I know for sure is even when you had that agenda, you were coming from a good place in your heart. Yes. Yes. Right. You were coming from a good place in your heart. Now, it wasn't effective, mm -hmm. but you noticed. So you had the insight that went, oh, hang on. I'm coming with this agenda. This isn't working. The minute you noticed it, the minute you had the insight, you immediately knew what to do. You mm -hmm. could shift and pivot in that moment. Right. And and spot on do something more effective. Wow. Yeah. And it's powerful. And that is how human beings are designed. Wow. wow. Right. So when I, a lot of times when I give, when I talk, I say awareness is everything. Mm. Nobody needed to lecture you on having like the pitfalls of having an agenda. Right. Right. right? <laughs> right. It probably wouldn't have helped. Right. But the minute you saw it for yourself, boom. Mm. The more powerful thing, it's right there and you're 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 in action. You're doing the you're doing the next step. Wow. So 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 Jane, how how do how do people in general, how do you how do they get to that point? Because for me, I think it was just I was just ready. I was just open and ready for it. But how how do people who really, really have the best desire for their company, for their employees, for their families, um, you know, how do they get to that point? What, what are some of the steps that they can, do you think that they can take to do that? Because it's, 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 it's an open experience, but you got to get there. Yes. So number one, human evolution, we all get there mm -hmm. at whatever level we get there, right? So sometimes it's, Sometimes we get there through pain. Mm -hmm. We have the pain of hitting our head against the wall again and again. It's not working. It's not working. It's not working. It's not working. And then somewhere, boom, the lightning strikes. Right. And again, that's how the human being is designed. So just, just by, you know, showing up and breathing and going through 
your daily life, you are getting there. Mm. Right. So again, that that's that like it's the, it's the design. We're not in control. Now, can you consciously accelerate that? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's where that's where coaching and training comes in. You know, if you you find someone that is speaking, uh, some speaking something that makes sense to you, engaging in that conversation will accelerate it. That's so th- that's a, a, you know, a great way. And again, even engaging in, in the conversation, mm-hmm. you still come to it when you're ready. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. even having a conversation with me mm-hmm. doesn't guarantee that you're going to get that result in the time frame that you have set for yourself. Right. 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 It, but it does heighten, it heightens the awareness. Right. And that's, again, comes back to awareness is everything. It heightens your awareness. You start looking in a direction that maybe you weren't looking before. Wow. Yeah. I, I remember um, one of my, my daughters and I, one of our favorite, movie, favorite movies is Father of the Bride. She loves that movie. And I remember there's a scene in there when Steve looks at, when Steve um, looks at his um, daughter and says to her, when did you get so smart? And, 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 and I look back then on record stress as, wow, she's always smart. You know, it's just now you just recognize it. You just noticed it, right? right. You just noticed it, you know? Right. <laughs> so, so it's got to get to the point where business owners, I guess, decide when they look at their employees, it's out. Oh, so when did you get so smart? You, you, after all, you hired them because you knew they were capable and able right. to do the job. So leave it there and, and trust that they can give you the right answer to move forward, even when you have to pivot your, your organization and, and go through the change. That's an awesome, I love that. I love what you just said about that. Just to, I love it. It's just yeah. Awesome. And it's, and it's powerful. You know, it, it's powerful what you're, what even you, you said about like being a parent and this is, this is, you know, the parent child relationship is very mm-hmm. similar to, you know, employee, <laughs> employer, manager. It, a lot of the dynamics are actually the same because in the parental role, you know, we, there's an assumption of authority (laughs) and, you know, and, and again, there's reality to that, but there's also a power in not having that, you know, authority, you know, or superior subordinate. (laughs) When you come in with the agenda, you come in with the teaching moment. Mm -hmm. It's, I always see myself as the one being the teacher, Mm-hmm. It's a different dynamic when you're shoulder to shoulder going, okay, mm-hmm. I'm just listening. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the learner in this situation. We're shoulder mm-hmm. to shoulder. It's a different dynamic. It has a different, it has a different feel, has the feel of a partnership. Right. Wow. Wow. I like it. I love that. Wow. This is, this is so helpful to me right now. So I'm, I'm enjoying you on the show and I'm hoping that all of our listeners are listening, that they're getting this invaluable information, but the, but this is just the top tip of the iceberg of what they will get when they um, have you come to, into their organization. We hear a lot about um, executive coaching and training, um, but what about the next level down? And when we speak of the next level down, we speak of employees or small business owners who are just coming up. Um, is it more difficult for them to progress um, in times and times and changes in their organization, is that more difficult for them? How does that look for, for small businesses and upcoming businesses? Yeah, it, it, it's interesting because, you know, I think when it, uh, the program that I have for that next level down is called the Emerging Leaders Training and Coaching Program. So in that I work with emerging leaders, those those individuals that have been identified where you know they have that spark, they have that something special, Mm -hmm. that that intelligence, that capability, and maybe they haven't had the full opportunity to serve in a leadership role. So their leadership skills aren't as developed as somebody that maybe has been a manager or something for years and years. And and that's that's where their their that's where their learning edge is. And you know, is it more difficult for them 
in changing times, it, it's, it can kind of go either way because in times of dramatic change, sometimes those folks who haven't had a lot of experience right. are more open to that fresh idea because they don't have a lot like, well, this is what worked before. A lot of times that, that, that weighs us down when we have so much experience from before. It, it can kind of weigh us down where somebody new, somebody with less experience can kind of look at a situation from a fresh slate and say, oh, what about this? Right. Right. So, uh, you know, so what I find with, with emerging leaders is really about developing those communication skills to allow them. And I don't even I don't want to say the confidence because the confidence comes after. Confidence is a byproduct. Mm -hmm. A lot of people misunderstand that. They think I have to have the mm -hmm. confidence first mm -hmm. to speak up or to yeah. do this. That's not true. You mm -hmm. can you can go full on with no confidence. It is mm -hmm. not necessary. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. <laughs> yeah. And and so that's again like so my the emerging leaders coaching and training, this is one of the concepts that I help them understand. Forget the confidence, that comes later. You do not need that to operate. Mm. Let's work on what you've got right now. And when you're willing to, to take the chance and try it out, try things out, the more you do, the more you can do, that's where the confidence, the confidence is later. It's a byproduct. Oh, wow. That, that is, wow. That is, <clears throat> that is one for the books. I usually have things that I have a journal that I write in <laughs> of all those remarkable things I learned. That's one of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a byproduct. I it's love a byproduct. it. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what do you have coming up that you're excited about? We talked about a little bit about it, but I really want to hit home on it because I'm loving it. I, yes. just, I just want to spread it out for everybody. Yes. You and me both. <laughs> I, no, I do. I have a new program called Making Space. Mm -hmm. Three days to explore your human experience. Wow. So what it is, Making Space is mm -hmm. a shorter, it's, it's literally, we do this over three days. Mm -hmm. We have five conversations over the span of three days. Mm -hmm. And I actually have one coming up this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it's a small group. It's, it'll be in person in a small group setting. Uh, however, this is available one-on-one -on -one and mm -hmm. online for groups. This is available okay. in multiple formats. <clears throat> what we do in making space mm -hmm. is just that. We look at your life, your whatever, whatever you're bringing to the table that you want to make space for. We mm -hmm. look through the lens of three principles, mind, consciousness, and thought, which are some of the things that I, what you've okay, been right. hearing mm -hmm. me speak of. That's on the guide in terms of let's keep looking in that direction. Mm -hmm. And we just slow down and look at it from that perspective. So I'll just give you an example of the layout of the, of the program so you can see how it works. This Friday, we go from three to five. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, we'll go from 10 to 12. We'll mm -hmm. take two hours for lunch mm -hmm. and then go two to four. Sunday, the exact same schedule, 10 to 12, two hours for lunch, two to four. Okay. Now, the conversation is powerful. When we're in the session, we have a powerful conversation. But what's also as important is the time in between. Because yes. we're making space, oh, right? Wow. So okay. you take your two yeah. hour, two Friday, three to five. And then I recommend don't have much on your agenda. Go home, have a nice meal, rest. Let give yourself time to contemplate. Mm. right because again insight is the, is the most important thing and it's your insight so it's it's like a little retreat for the mind it's a retreat for the busy mind and it's best when you give yourself that space to just relax and allow yourself to process and see whatever is there for you to see wow 
I love that. I love I love the fact that you 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 have you give yourself permission to turn it off, to just relax, to not think about those things that are you know causing the impact in your life that are negative, and just relax. I think one of, one of the things that I find very very helpful for me I'm I love outside work, gardening, any yard work. I'm there. And when I'm doing that, it's, that is my downtime. That is my time. I put my headsets on. I listen to the music I want to listen to. I'm a jazz man. I put the jazz on. I'll sit out there and I am just like in heaven. It is like all of the impurities, all of the thoughts that are, that are weighing me down. If, if, it's a, if it's a bill that has to be due and I know I don't have money for it or whatever, all those things are gone because I'm doing what I love. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> there's thoughts that come to my mind. There's, so I can find some solutions sometimes just by, <clears throat> just by not thinking about it. All of a sudden it says, hey, what if I do this? You, and, it, and it all happened. I'll just, and I'll stop what I'm doing. I go home and I, I go in the house and I write it down. I get, oh my God, oh my God, this is awesome. This is awesome. Write it down. You go back out and work. So is that, is that somewhat where you're talking about making space? That's exactly what I'm talking about. That, so this conversation points mm -hmm. in exactly that direction. Wow. One way we use to describe what you just described is it occurred out of the blue. Yes. It came from out of the blue, boom, and there it is. Insight. That's, that's what we're going for. Oh, wow. And that's what we're making space for. Wow. That is, that is, and you know what, that is so needed in our time right now, because right now the world is in, in, is, is in front view of stress, anxiety, um, and to get, and sometimes you have to step back from that. Um, I do a lot of things in my ministry, being a minister, I do a lot of um, marriage counseling. Yeah. And um, one, of the, one of the things I say to them is, um, how, how do you feel about each other when you're away from each other? Like, like when you're like, when you're like, when she's at her house or at your house and you have time to think, what are the thoughts that come in your, in your head about each other? Yeah. I said, because, and then, and then if those thoughts are something that need to be talked about, is it a complicated thing for you to reach an agreement when you talk to them, when you come together? Is, is, is it okay to do that? Do you feel, do you feel safe doing that? Mm -hmm. and, and most of them will say, um, well, yeah, I think I do. I says, well, have that conversation. <laughs> you know? yeah. and, and, and a lot of people don't do, a lot of people have to realize that's what marriage is. Marriage is that. Mar marriage is, I'm not going to always see things the way you see it. But at the end of the day, we're both running the same household. Right. How do we marry these things together right. to make this household a happy home, not just a house? How do we do that? How do we get to that point? And so I think, and I saw when you're doing this with, with team, and so when we're looking at the world we're looking at today, we're in a pandemic. Like you said, it's not going anywhere. We're in it. That's right. <laughs> so, 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 so when you say mind, thought, process, and consciousness, you know, we have to take all this stuff in consideration, like you said, and have someone like you come into our organizations and show us how we can get through this pandemic, how we can do it, because we need help with this. Um, uh, uh, most people can't figure this out by themselves. And like you say, you don't have all the answers, but what you do do, you have the tools that has been proven to work. I know they've been proven to work because you've done it with our teams. <laughs> <laughs> and we're and we are and we're so much the better for it because you've come into our lives and I want to thank you for that publicly. Yeah, um, and thank you for acknowledging that. that. I really appreciate yeah, it. it. Really, yes. our team has our team has um, from the last session we had with you have just jumped milestones. Um, yeah. We've we've learned how to work with each other. We've learned how to communicate differently. You know, and so those things really really help us. So now I'm ready for you to come back and I'll talk to Anita about making space so yes. that we have that comfortable space to talk about that difficult issue and not be persecuted in that space because you brought it up. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And <laughs> making space is a beautiful program for mm -hmm. a team environment. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a beautiful program for that because the conversation will point. We, we, we keep pointing to just the principles mm -hmm. and it's what's true. And as as you know, as you continue to let that evolve, it's it's a really it's a really powerful conversation. And mm -hmm. you know, just as you spoke about in the garden, right? <laughs> it it's it's like a time in the garden, really, because in that in that space it allows for something new to come forth. And that's, you know, that's where those solutions are. Wow. And, and, and that to me is what, like what's so powerful is each individual, the solutions for you are within you. Mm, powerful. Wow. My, my role is not advice giving or coming up with solutions for you. It's pointing mm. you continuing to point you back to those things that are already true wow. as you keep looking in that direction it it just like in the garden it comes forth from you the yeah. idea occurs to you yeah, wow. Wow. yeah. so and so these things are within us we just have to make space and room for them um, to flourish yeah. wow that that is a great i am so excited about this program I am, I am, Me too. <laughs> I am so excited about it. Wow. Okay. So now, so now are you going to be doing any of this? I know you are a big part of the Miramar Pembroke Pine Chamber of Commerce. Yes. I'm, I'm hoping that there is space for you <laughs> to, to do this in the Chamber of Commerce, because this would really, really help the business owners there, but also the organization itself. You know, um, we have a new director there. We have a new, um, um, president there who's doing a wonderful job yeah she's and, doing a great um, job the team is just great and it's flourishing it's it's growing and i know even from the top there there may be an opportunity for space so I patty, would love if you're that. listening yes yeah, so patty if you're listening <laughs> <laughs> you may want to have this session with your team as well <laughs> well uh, jane it has been a pleasure having you on to, this morning it You've has always, been my always, pleasure being here. I've really enjoyed our conversation this morning. Oh, I appreciate you being here. It's, it's, you are always enlightening to me. You are always on point. And your demeanor and your temperament and how you address issues is key in everything. You, you, you come to um, anyone, and I'm saying this for any organization who's listening, who are thinking about team building. Um, you want to get someone who's like, first of all, qualified in which you are. You want to also get someone with a demeanor and a temperament that comes in that they're not trying to take control. They're trying to, they're trying to develop space for you to have, take positive action towards a positive outcome. And, and, and you always show up that way. You never show up trying to take control of it, but just letting it be what it is and having us do the work. <laughs> absolutely so so absolutely. i appreciate you for that thank so, you so much for your comments i really i really oh, genuinely appreciate that i'm your biggest fan right. <laughs> so so and so miramar business owners please if you have not register for the miramar business pulse it is a newsletter that comes out and it tells you everything and it gives you all the information and resources that are going on in the city of miramar um, we have a lot of things that's available for you, such as resources, such as SBA loans. How do, how do you apply for them? How do you get them? Uh, networking workshops. We have all kinds of um, programs with Broward Up. Everything that's ready for you there. Also, you can log in on the economic and business development platform, our, our, um, our um, platform. We have there, you can go on Miramar, on www.miramarfl.gov backslash EBD. There you'll find out all the resources that we have available for the businesses in the city of Miramar. And believe me, we have a, 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 an array of resources, information for you that we would like to walk you through. If you're trying to start a business in the city of Miramar, we can walk you through from point A to point Z. And we can walk you through the part of where you're even opening your business in the city and your grand opening. So visit those sites. Again, my name is Johnny Douglas. This is Business Connect. I'm asking you to be nice, be safe, but also stay connected.